On today's show, Carlos Correa goes to the Giants. What does that have to do with the Yankees? Plenty. We're going to talk about it. Plus, there are some rumors about a possible Yankee return for a starting pitcher, meaning he's returning to the Yankees if something else doesn't work out. We'll talk about that. And the Yankees released their 2023 promotional schedule. And we're going to talk about some of the cool things that you might be able to get if you go to Yankee Stadium next year. All that and more next on Locked on Yankees. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everyone. It is Wednesday, December 14th. I am your host, Stacey Gotsoulias. You are listening to and watching Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining me. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Also hit the thumbs up button to like our videos and the bell so you're notified as soon as our videos go live. Two notes about YouTube. One, we're very close to 1,600 subscribers, so thank you for that. And if you aren't subscribed, please do so. And if you go to YouTube, you will notice that there is a preview for a live stream that will be happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. So please join me. You can chat and ask questions. And uh, yeah, could be fun. Maybe. Uh, So the news came out late last night, literally, because I was sleeping and didn't find out till in the middle of the night that Carlos Correa was signed by the San Francisco Giants. So the San Francisco Giants got a big free agent signing. And it was a big signing, both in money and length. 13 years, $350 million. My goodness, that news broke pretty late last night. I believe that Jeff Passan tweeted it just after midnight. I was already asleep. And then I woke up at 2.30 in the morning for no apparent reason and uh, did what I normally do and checked Twitter and saw in the Locked On Host group DM that they were all congratulating Ben from Locked On Giants. And I thought, ooh. And it was really funny because when I went into the Twitter timeline, it took me a while to see the length and the terms of the contract. All I kept seeing was that Correa was going to the Giants. I didn't see anything about years, didn't see anything about money. I was scrolling for like five minutes. And I was also half awake and was being lazy and didn't even think of toggling over to Google and looking it up myself. I just figured it's got to be here on Twitter somewhere. And then I scrolled back far enough to see Passon's tweet and everyone else's subsequent tweets about it. And good for Carlos Correa. Really. I mean, 13 years, 350, you're set for life. He's about to turn 28 or just turned 28. And again, the same stuff that came up with judge's contract with Trey Turner's contract with all the big contracts wow the last three years of that deal aren't going to look good the teams know this (laughs) they're not expecting these guys to play to play really well at 41 years old I mean some guys do play well at 41 years old but most of these teams know that these guys are going to be you know I won't say falling off a cliff you know because some of them are playing demanding positions and you don't expect them to be running around all spry at 41 years old when they're playing shortstop like Turner and um, Correa and then with Aaron Judge we've never really seen a guy who's six foot seven 282 playing the outfield like he does and it'll be interesting to see how everything breaks down toward the latter end of that contract end of the career so good for Carlos Correa there were rumors Although I don't think they were really, I don't think there was any real momentum to them because I feel like the Mets are linked with everyone, but people were just thinking because Steve Cohen is handing out contracts like cars, Oprah and cars, 
<laughs> or so it seems, that it was possible Correa could go to the Mets. And, you know, there was a part of me that was thankful for that because, guys, we know. We know how our fellow Yankee fans are. Some of you out there are like this. And I know that if Carlos Correa had become a Met, some of you would have gone absolutely bonkers. And it would have just been torture. Um, so I'm glad that he went to the Giants. And Dodgers fans are already having fun with this because they already have the rivalry with the Giants. And now they have someone from the team that cheated against them in 2017 even though they claim not to but whatever <laughs> we all know the truth come on stop so that's going to add another layer to the LA San Francisco rivalry in 2023 and that'll be fun to watch from a distance yeah and adding to the LA San Francisco competition in the NL West. Noah Syndergaard signed a deal with the Dodgers. Not a big one. And I think he got less money than some of the sites were projecting. For the most part, any sites that were projecting totals for the free agents so far have been pretty close to what they've gotten. I think Chris Bassett's deal with the Jays was pretty close to what I believe Fangraphs was predicting for him. So it's interesting to see all these contracts happening especially the long ones like I mentioned Correa Trey Turner Judge I'm missing someone I'm missing someone else who signed a big contract and it's so funny because all this stuff happened within the last two weeks and it feels like Judge signed three weeks ago and it was only last week it only just happened last week but it feels like that was so long ago. It feels like the winter meetings were in November as opposed to December. Now, the thing about the Correa signing and how it relates to the Yankees, Jack Curry tweeted something earlier today that made me go off. And it's not because of Curry. It's because of the Yankees. He said he was talking about Correa signing with the Giants and how the Yankees held on to Volpe and Peraza and passed on, you know, the last two free agent shortstop classes because they passed up on Correa twice. And I, I became enraged because I thought about what they did to Peraza toward the end of the season and during the playoffs. And I was going to quote tweet Jack Curry and say something to the effect of, yeah, and then they didn't play Peraza because reasons. These kids better be good. Volpe looks like he's going to be good, you know. But as I've said in shows in the past when we were talking about how the Yankees have held on to these guys so tightly, like the prospect hugging thing that everyone used to joke about is happening with these two guys. And I really don't want Volpe to crack under the pressure that the Yankees are ultimately putting on him but so far so good you know whenever he goes up to a new level he does pretty well so you know I think they're gonna wait just to make sure that he's good enough to be in the majors I know that Hal said that Peraza and Volpe will be at spring training and possibly competing to be on the big team and as I've said about three times so far, that just because they signed IKF to that $6 million deal doesn't mean he's not going to be riding the bench if those two kids show up in spring training and are like, you know, we're better. Please play us. And maybe the Yankees will actually play them. That would be nice. That'd be really nice. So in a moment, we're going to talk about a name that is attached to the Yankees, who used to be a Yankee, and I don't know how to feel about this, so we're going to discuss it in a moment. But first, Bet Online 
is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. The Knicks are doing pretty well, surprisingly. The Rangers, but they beat the Devils. They actually beat the Devils because I know the Devils were on that very long streak. So maybe the Rangers are turning things around for themselves. And yeah, the winter sports are going wild in New York. So go to bet online, see how all the lines are doing and what you can bet on. And they're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Thanks for making Locked On Yankees your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. So the name that's attached to the Yankees that isn't Carlos Rodon because he's attached to the Yankees. There are tons of rumors going around that the Yankees are really interested in him. He's interested in going to the Yankees, but there might be a money holdup. I don't know. The idea of having Carlos Rodon in the rotation with Garrett Cole, Nestor Cortez, Luis Severino, even Montas, just maybe if he comes back, maybe after a rest during the winter and he works his way back from that shoulder injury and maybe he does better than he did last year, that could be a pretty formidable rotation right there. I say the Yankees should go for it. Make this like the off season between 08 and 09. Maybe not that much. The Mets are doing that by spending $400 million. The Yankees, not so much. But maybe if they add Rodone, and I think they should. But the other rumor is that if they can't get Rodone, they might be interested in a reunion with Nathan Ivaldi. I don't know about that. I I feel like been there, done that, and it almost feels like a Javi Vasquez. I know that's, oh, I know for some Yankee fans, that's a name that we don't want to hear <laughs> ever again because the Yankees had two failed Javi Vasquez experiments experiences experiences and it feels like the same could be happening with Nate Evaldi you know he did a really good job with the Red Sox of course won a World Series with the Red Sox but you gotta go after Rodone right yeah no you have to go after Rodone let me what you tell me what you think in the comments on YouTube or you know tweet me so last year, he was 6-3 and three with a 3.7 ERA. His war was 1.5. His career war is 15.8. He's 67-68 and 68 overall with a 4.16 ERA. He's one of those guys that should have been better than he was. Like you would see his stuff sometimes and think, wow. And then two pitches later... It was like watching a completely different pitcher because he was all over the place. And when he was with the Yankees, he was just really, it was disappointing. And I don't know if they should really do that. I think they should go all in on Rodone. Evaldi is 32. He's about to turn 33 in February, which is also kind of a scary proposition there. And I think that maybe... The Yankees should just pass on that and go for Rodon. Rodon just turned 30 on December 10th. Last year, he was 14 and 8 with a 288 ERA. And in his career, he's 56 and 46 with a 3.60 ERA. And his career war is 16.6. So with the 2022 Giants, Rodone had a pretty good year. And who was it? Someone put up Rodone when he was with the White Sox dispatching some of the 
Yankees. Uh, Judge, I believe. I was watching him strike out Judge a few times. And um, <laughs> yeah, I would like him on this side of everything. You know what I mean? I would like for him to be on the Yankees side of the street and help the Yankees out. That would be great. And here we go. ERA of 288, 14 and 8 with the Giants, 178 innings pitched right on the nose. And let's see, gave up 12 home runs. That's 21 less than Garrett Cole did. <laughs> I will never not, I will always bring that up. I will be 90 in a nursing home and talking about Garrett Cole giving up 33 home runs in 2022. <laughs> Sorry, Garrett. I'm so sorry. I really am. But I can't help it because that's just ridiculous. It was a ridiculous number. And yeah. And for Rodone, 237 strikeouts, which is only what, 20, 21 less than uh, Cole. So pretty good, pretty good ratio there. I always talk about this. You want the strikeouts to be a lot higher than the innings and 237 to 178. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. So, yeah, Yankees, go after Rodon. Don't go after Evaldi. No offense to Nathan Evaldi, but again, Yankee fans do not want to repeat. And I know the Yankees like to do that sort of thing where they try and see if a guy can come back and maybe there's like a second chance. Maybe he does better the second time around. And I think we've seen it too many times where it doesn't work out well the second time around. And yeah, go after Rodown. Just do it. Do it, Hal. You see what the Mets are doing. Just sign him. Don't worry about the luxury tax. Don't worry about any penalties. Just do it. So in a moment, we're going to look at the Yankees' perf I almost said professional schedule, <laughs> promotional schedule for 2023. There's a sneak peek. They sent it out via email. And we're going to talk about some of the dates because I'm questioning Old Timers Day because it's kind of odd. And I'll explain why in a moment. But first, so the Yankees promotional <laughs> schedule came out, or at least there's a sneak peek of it. And some of the days that are spotlighted in the email, the first series of the year against the San Francisco Giants, and we talked about this before Judge signed, how this could have been a disaster if the Yankees didn't sign Judge. So thank God they did. And now it's the team that he didn't go to who was coming into town to play the Yankees to open the season. So April 1st and April 2nd, it's calendar weekend. You get a Yankees calendar for opening weekend because I believe opening day is Thursday, Friday is the off day in case it snows or rains or whatever happens. And then Saturday and Sunday you get the calendar. So yeah, um, I'm trying to remember opening days like what I've gotten in the past. I haven't been to opening day since 2011. I think 2011 was the last one I went to. It's been a while. April 14th against the Twins, you get Tino Martinez bobblehead night. Now, I didn't see anything yet about there being any kind of 1998 Yankees ceremony or something. I mean, you would think that there would be something because it's 25 years. 25 is a big anniversary. So that might be something that they add to the schedule at some point because they always do that too. So um, be on the lookout for some sort of 1998 remembrance from the Yankees. I would assume that's going to happen. Um, they might be doing 45 years for 1978. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So May 12th, Star Wars night, and it's an Anthony Rizzo Mandalorian bobblehead. Now, the bobbleheads, Tina Martinez and Anthony Rizzo, the first 18,000 guests, because God forbid, God forbid they make more than 18,000 bobbleheads. So, you know, the lines are out the door and then people behind. It's Why can't you make more bobbleheads? Why can't you make... 20 to 25,000 bobbleheads. I, I don't understand this at all. 
the, these promotional things drive me crazy. It's not like you don't have the money to do this. So what is the deal? July 21st, Nestor Cortez bobblehead night. That's presented by T-Mobile. So I don't know if there's going to be pink on the bobblehead, but yeah, Nestor Cortez. And then, oh, yep. Okay. August 4th, Bucky Dent bobblehead night. Of course, because as I just said, 45th anniversary of 1978. So you're going to be hearing a lot about that team as well. And I'm going to have to get that for my mother. My mother loves Bucky Dent. Loved him in 1978. Still loves him. If we go to Old Timers Day, we've been to Old Timers Day a couple times together. And she goes nuts every time she sees him. So, And if we're watching it at home, she goes nuts. And speaking of Old Timers Day, kind of strange. It's not until September 9th. It doesn't say anything about it being a game or a ceremony. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this year there's a game attached to it and that it's not just a ceremony because no offense, but that was, I mean, it was kind of cool seeing some of the guys there, but the whole thing about Old Timers Day is watching the game. I saw Mo hit an inside the park home run at Old Timers Day. Was it the last one we were at? Was that the last game? I'm trying to remember if that was the last one before COVID. It may have been. And then I saw Hideki Matsui hit a home run. Old Timers Day. Off cone, if I'm not mistaken. And it was just so much fun. You know, it's it's gotten depressing though, and I've spoken about this before. I've been going to Old Timers Day since the 90s. I'm, I have a streak and I don't consider my streak ended because of COVID and because there was literally no game last year. So I have been to old timers games every time there's been one since 1998. So I still have that streak going. And if there's a game on September 9th, I will be there because I want the streak to continue. But when I first started going in the 90s, a lot of the guys from the 40s, the 50s, and 60s were still alive. And now s nearly none of them are alive anymore. We lost Dr. Bobby Brown. He was one of the last links to, or he was the last link to the 47 team. And I always loved seeing him. His story is amazing. Becoming a cardiologist. I mean, you know, he fought in the Korean War. Like, there's so many things about Dr. Bobby Brown that were just amazing. And seeing him at Old Timers Day was just such a thrill. And, you know, obviously Whitey and Yogi coming back. And I was there for Joe DiMaggio Day in 1999 when Yogi Berra finally came back to Yankee Stadium after all those years of fighting with Steinbrenner. And so many of those guys who are gone now. I remember being particularly upset about Muscarin passing away. And I was there for Don Mattingly's first Old Timers Day. And it was a real trip seeing some of the guys that, some of the other guys I watched. Like, it was one thing to see Don Mattingly at Old Timers Day. But when guys like Johnny Damon started showing up for Old Timers Day and, you know, Jason Giambi was at Old Timers Day recently. And it's like, oh, man, all the 2000 guys are coming. 2000s. So 2000 to 2010. And soon we'll be seeing some of the uh, guys who were around in the late 2000s, early 2010s, you know could see like Jabba Chamberlain someday soon or maybe Phil Hughes might come back Ooh, just think about that that would be really that would be something that would be really something so yeah those are just some of the promotional days that the Yankees had a sneak peek of but again let me know in the comments if you agree with me about the bobbleheads, because it drives me crazy when I have to go to Yankee Stadium and you have to make sure you get there early or else you won't get a bobblehead. But then you end up walking around and seeing people walking around with like four bobbleheads. And it's like, how did you get that many? You're only supposed to get one. So some people are sneaky about that. And because they're only giving away 18,000, it's also annoying because a lot of people who get the bobbleheads end up selling them. <laughs> on the internet when people like me legitimately want bobbleheads i have a whole collection of bobbleheads in my room which you will see one day when i set things up in a better way and uh i will say 
I have a Hideki Matsui bobblehead that looks absolutely nothing like Hideki Matsui. The Bernie Williams I have looks nothing like Bernie Williams. I have two different Jason Giambis. And they, well, you know, they kind of look like Jason Giambi, but not really. And the Jeter one isn't that great either. Actually, both Hideki Matsui's I have don't look like him. Unbelievable. But the Mattingly, I will say the Mattingly and the Joe Tori look like who they're supposed to look like. But man, the, the Matsui's are horrible. <laughs> you know how the Hall of Fame plaques and the um, Monument Park plaques look horrible and, you know, don't look anything like the men they're supposed to be? That's basically what a bobblehead is. But it's nice to have them anyway, even though they don't look like the person. So yeah, Yankees, get on that. Make at least 20,000. Bump it up to 22,000. You fit 40, what, 41, 42,000 people in that stadium. And you're making it so more than half of the people who go to games don't get bobbleheads? It's ridiculous. Before I go, a reminder about tomorrow. 7 p.m. Live on YouTube. I will be discussing the baseball owners of New York, Steve Cohen and Hal Steinbrenner. Is Steve Cohen better? We're going to examine everything. It'll be fun. So please make sure to sign into YouTube and there's a button that says notify me and YouTube will notify you when I go live and the chat will be activated and you can ask questions and make comments. And I want you to do that so you will help me along as I do my live show. Because I did a live show when Judge signed and it was a lot of fun and you guys were really great and supportive and you wanted me to do more live shows. So here I am. We're going to do one tomorrow at 7 p.m. So be on the lookout for that. And if you're listening on audio, I am going to put that up after we go live on YouTube. So going live on YouTube from 7 to 7.30-ish, and hopefully the audio version will be up by 8 o'clock tomorrow night, just to give you a heads up. So that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, you can listen to us on every podcasting platform available. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, we're very close to 1,600, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit the thumbs up button, comment, and click the bell so you know when our videos go up. And once again, thanks for making Locked On Yankees your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. So enjoy your Wednesday night, and I will talk to you live tomorrow at 7 p.m.